All right, YouTube. Today we have a block which is attached to a spring and that spring has been compressed some distance from equilibrium. And we're gonna let this block go and it's gonna oscillate back and forth on a frictionless surface. Now today we're gonna to solve for the maximum velocity of this block as it's pushed forward by the spring. And we're also gonna solve for the velocity of this block once the spring has been pushed forward or relaxed to a point where it's only 0.25 meters away from equilibrium. Now I understand if you're dealing with a problem like this, you probably have different numbers, but I'll try to do as much of this as possible in variables in order to make this useful for whatever it is you're trying to do. So what we're gonna do here is construct an equation that's gonna tell us exactly how fast this block is going at any position, regardless of where it is in its oscillation. And by plugging in certain values, we'll be able to figure out both the maximum velocity as well as how fast this block is going once the spring reaches this point here. Now to do that, I wanna take a look at energy. So as we compress this spring from equilibrium, we're effectively storing energy in this spring. And the energy stored in a spring is given by 1 half kx squared, where k is the spring constant and x is how far the spring has been compressed. So as this spring is compressed, we're effectively storing energy in the spring, which is later gonna be released into the block as the spring pushes the block forward. Now, since this spring and block have been pushed back 0.5 meters from equilibrium, once we let this spring go, this block is gonna oscillate with an amplitude of 0.5 meters. So that means the energy which we're starting with in the spring is gonna be given by 1 half k a squared, where a is the amplitude of oscillation. Now as the spring pushes the block forward, elastic potential energy is gonna be converted into kinetic energy in the block. And we know kinetic energy is given by 1 half mv squared, where m is the mass and v is the velocity of the block at any given point. Now how these two values relate to each other are kind of hard to see in the math. So what I wanna do is look at a graph of the energy as this block moves from a position over here to a position over here. Now we know our spring is gonna start with some energy stored in it, which is given by 1 half Ka squared. But as the block is pushed forward, the distance which the spring is compressed, really given by this equation, as x becomes closer and closer to zero, the potential energy is gonna decrease. But as the block moves to the other side of equilibrium, the energy stored in the spring is again gonna increase. So what we'll see over here is something that looks a bit like this. So the block's gonna be pushed forward towards equilibrium, and as that happens, the spring is going to decrease in potential energy, ultimately turning that energy into kinetic energy. Once the block passes equilibrium, the potential energy is again going to increase as the spring is now stretched as we move away from equilibrium. And then the block's gonna stop at some position over here, we're gonna call it positive A, which in this case is 0.5 meters to the right of equilibrium. Now the key idea in all of that was as the potential energy of the spring was decreasing, the block is gaining kinetic energy. And what this all goes back to is mechanical energy. See, mechanical energy is given by the kinetic energy plus the potential energy of a system. In this case, that system is the spring and the block. So at any point, the total mechanical energy is gonna be given by the total kinetic energy plus the total potential energy. And I want you to realize this total mechanical energy is gonna be the amount of energy which we started with. That was the energy initially stored in the spring. That's 1 half Ka squared. And realize this equation is gonna allow us to solve for not only the maximum velocity of the block, but the velocity of the block at any position between the left and right ends of its oscillation. So first let's use this equation to solve for the maximum velocity of this block. So in looking at this equation, this is telling us that the total mechanical energy is always gonna remain constant. But as the block is pushed towards equilibrium, the elastic potential energy is gonna decrease, and therefore the kinetic energy is gonna increase.
And by looking at the graph, you can see the kinetic energy is at a maximum when the potential energy is at a minimum, or really when the spring, according to this equation, hasn't been compressed or stretched at all. So to find the maximum velocity, if we set the elastic potential energy equal to zero, we can solve for the maximum velocity. So plugging the numbers in this problem into this formula, we find the maximum velocity is 3.53 meters per second. And YouTube, you take the sig figs with this just as far as you want. You, you know if you've seen any of my videos before, I, I just don't care. Now moving on to finding the velocity of this block once the spring is 0.25 meters away from equilibrium. We're again gonna use this equation Except this time, rather than having the spring relaxed all the way to equilibrium, like we did in this case, we're still going to have some spring compression, and therefore there's still going to be some energy stored in the spring. So plugging in our values from the problem into our equation, we find the block is traveling 3.06 meters when the spring is 0.25 meters away from equilibrium. And this result is a little bit non-intuitive. You would think that if the block is pushed halfway towards equilibrium, it's probably only moving half of its maximum velocity. But you'll notice the way this potential energy curve drops off, most of the potential energy is lost in the first portion of the, the spring's travel, or most of the work is done on the block, and its increase in kinetic energy occurs as the block is first pushed forward just a little ways. So by the time it's halfway to equilibrium, it's sped up to almost all of its maximum velocity. So I hope you found this helpful in understanding how mechanical energy ties into the oscillation of a block on a spring. And on that note, that's all for now.